predict the molecular geometry of ClNO or nitrosyl chloride. To predict the molecular geometry, I recommend drawing the Lewis structure. I'm going to draw my Cl and my N and my O in a line, and I'm going to take a look at the valence electrons from each. Chlorine is in group 17, so it brings seven valence electrons. Nitrogen in group 15 brings five. Oxygen in group 16 brings six. When you add all of those together, you end up with 18 valence electrons to be put down in your Lewis structure. I always start with my single bonds. That's one, two electrons, three, four electrons. And then I fill the octet on my outer atoms. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now that's only 16 electrons and I need 18. So I take the extras and I dump them on the center atom. I don't have anywhere else I can put them. These octets were already full. And then we need to decide whether or not, or like, yeah, whether or not all of the octet rules have been satisfied here. You can use formal charge for this if you'd like, but uh, I'm going to opt not to. This chlorine has eight electrons, great. This oxygen has eight electrons, great. This nitrogen only has one, two, three, four, five, six around it though. So we have to decide whether or not we're gonna bring a lone pair in from this chlorine and share or from this oxygen and share. Fun fact, it doesn't actually matter for the molecular geometry, but I like drawing good Lewis structures. Chlorine in group 17 only needs one extra electron to be stable. Oxygen itself would have what prefers to have gained two to be stable. I want to point out that chlorine likes making single bonds and oxygen can make double bonds because it's two electrons short of its full octet. So I think we should take those electrons from oxygen and make it a double bond here. Cool. Well, there we are. This is the complete Lewis structure. The molecular geometry comes from Vesper. The center atom is always given an A. And then the number of atoms it's bonded to is the subscript on X. That's AX2 because there's two atoms the nitrogen's connected to. And the subscript on your E is for the number of lone pairs on the center atom. So here we only have that one pair there. It's AX2E1. Now, you might just already know that that's uh, nonlinear or bent. I think bent is the word that they prefer for that. But I want to show you why that's the case. This two and one combined make three things. So around your A, you have three things. How far apart can three things get? And the official answer for that is if they spin out from each other, they can all get 120 degrees away from each other. I can even show you that with three markers. That's as far away as these three markers can get from each other if they're all still connected to the center atom. But what's happening here is that one of them is actually a lone pair. Lone pairs, I mean, they technically take up space in terms of electron repulsion, but there's no atom there. And because they take up a little bit more space in terms of electron repulsion than actual bonds, when you take away an electron's lone pair, it pushes the two bonding pairs slightly closer together. What I'm trying to say is that the molecular structure here is probably more similar to that. I guess I should have just written N there. That's a double bond. And the bond angle is actually a little bit less than 120 because the lone pair on the N is pushing those two things closer together. I don't know, I'm gonna estimate it to be 118 degrees. Cool, the point is the nitrogen's connected to two atoms and has one lone pair, so it has a nonlinear slash bent geometry. As always, best of luck.